When you've got a foundation of joy, this confidence, this strength, it is so easy for happiness now to flow in so many areas of your life. Christmas. Now, if you've ever heard me speak any time at the end of the year, you know I absolutely love Christmas. Uh, I've just been raised that way. Um, I love everything about it, uh, from buying presents to sitting on Santa's knee to all the fairy tales that go with it, from the Grinches to the elves to you name it. I just feel just a laugh a lot is so important. And so I'm looking forward to Christmas this year. Today, I'm going to share a part of the Christmas story, but buried in this Christmas story is an amazing truth that I want to get across. Sometimes we can read a story for its cuteness and its beauty on our Christmas cards or the, you know, the dramas that we produce. But today I want to talk about joy, the strength of the leader. Every one of us is called to lead, lead your family, lead in your business, lead in our communities. Lead means to be first, be the first to forgive, the first to love, the first to put out a hand, the first to be kind. Every one of us are leaders. And this is about joy, the strength of a leader. And you're going to find out today as we go through this, I'm going to show you how to destroy fear in your life. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 8 to 11, it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and then the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. Uh, you know, that old English word, really afraid. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, everybody, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. It's amazing that almost every time angels uh, would appear to anyone in the Bible, they would say, fear not, or today, don't be afraid. And even when, uh, well, you'll just find it everywhere. Even when Jesus was about to do a miracle with somebody and they were going through incredible stress, he would often turn to that person and say, don't be afraid. Or in the language from back, fear not. Do not be afraid. That means we have the ability. Everybody has the ability to deal with fear. And I want to talk about this because so few people understand fear. Fear makes people act aggressively towards those who speak truth. Fear destroys your ability to think creatively. If you give in to fear, forget strategic thinking. You won't have a strategy that even works. Fear will shut your mind down, shut your body down. It'll make your emotions do crazy things. And you won't be... And, and, when your emotions do crazy things, you'll want to blame it on others. But really, it's you who have allowed the fear in. And now that fear, which causes a plethora of negative emotions, every negative emotion, every snappy thing. I mean, one person will do something that would normally you'd laugh at, but now you're angry, you're snapping out. And so fear destroys you emotionally, which means it'll begin to destroy your relationships. If you're short-tempered, you're fearful. If you get angry quick, you're fearful. I, I could go on listing almost every negative emotion, envy, malice, jealousy, pride, are all rooted in fear. To win over fear is something that has to be done. Now here it says, this angel in the Christmas story, he appears and he begins to speak to these people. He says, fear not, because I'm bringing you great joy. So that's what I want to talk about today, because if you understand the word joy, it is different than the word happiness. 
You can have this force of joy. You can have a strength of joy that even when you are experiencing sadness, you're experiencing loss, you're experiencing disappointment, you're experiencing um, hurt, uh, you know, and list these feelings. Did you know that you never need to let go of your joy. Now, joy is not this ridiculous, ah, you know, trying to laugh when everyone can tell you're hurting. Joy isn't an emotion, but it will bring a stability to your emotions. Joy, according to the Bible, and we'll go through some verses, is a strength. It is this underlying strength that the Bible also teaches is a confidence. This confidence will stay put, not because you're confident in yourself, but a confidence that comes from him. There's a peace that Jesus said, I'm going to leave with you a peace that the world can't produce. Okay, I'm going to leave it with you. And he says, see, the world only has peace when problems are solved. But the word is very clear about how to push away fear, to get it out of your life. So joy is not a giggling, worldly kind of happiness. You know, happiness comes from happenings. If you're happy, something has happened. And because something has happened, you're happy. That's not joy. I love happiness and I treasure all the great happenings in my life. But when things don't go the way I want, when bad news is coming over the mountain, when, when people begin to say and do and things aren't going the way you want, you never let go of your joy. This joy is a powerful force. It is a strength that is saying to you that things will get better that I have placed my life into the hands of the King of Kings. This joy is a confidence. In Hebrews 10, 36, it says, don't throw away your confidence. It will be rewarded. You see, confidence cannot be taken from you. You have to throw it away. Joy will help us stay confident. And I'm going to show you as we walk through these verses, all of the biblical verses that refer to joy. Now, the world, by that I mean people who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ, have not believed on him and invited him in. They don't have access to this. You see, salvation is a gift to those who don't believe on Jesus. That once they check him out, they hear the word, a little faith rises, and they choose Jesus, their gift is salvation. But Holy Spirit is a gift to believers. Once you choose Jesus and you believe on Jesus, Holy Spirit comes in and now you have his joy. Now you have his confidence and you can feel it on the inside. And there's things you need to do to keep it. So joy will help us to stay confident and we can't throw away. If you start to feel a little uneasy and old feelings come back of fear, so do not cast away your confidence. There's an incredible verse in Romans 14, 17, and it's saying this to people who walk on planet earth, that the kingdom of God, it's not about eating and drinking and what you should and shouldn't do there. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy. Now, did you know that you can be citizen in a, a citizen in a country while you are walking through a different country? When I am walking through another country, whether it's France or England, Australia, that just because I'm over there does not mean I'm a citizen of there, but I am a citizen of Canada. Did you know there are two kingdoms on the planet? There's a kingdom of, of God, a kingdom of light, in the kingdom of darkness. And it's saying that this kingdom can be experienced before you go to the place called 
heaven. And this is really important because the Bible teaches us that right now we can enter into the kingdom of heaven because Holy Spirit is within us. The Spirit of God is within us and you can, you can be righteous. Well, what is righteous? It's you're right with God because of Jesus. It's an amazing feeling when you lose this, I'm not good enough and oh, I've done so much wrong and if someone ever tells on me, I'm in trouble and if people ever reveal my past or what's gone on, but because of Jesus, you have a brand new start, a fresh start. And so you are in right standing with God. You are righteous. And then you can have a peace that is a heavenly peace and a joy that is a heavenly joy. This angel, he reported to them that don't, don't be afraid. I bring you good tidings of not just a little bit of joy, but he used the word great joy. Why? This joy would be crucial to us in the years, the decades, the millennia that were ahead. Proverbs is filled with brilliant wisdom, sayings that you could meditate on. And even as I study psychology and you study many of the things today, you'll notice that if it's a truth, you'll find it written here, especially in Proverbs, when it comes to all of this area of relationship and emotion and behavior, that the book of Proverbs is a stunning book. And it's teaching us that a, a sadness of heart, that a troubled heart can break a person's spirit. I've spoken with people for years, and when you look at them, they are a broken person. Something has broken something on the inside. They would prefer a broken finger. They would prefer a broken arm, a broken leg, but a broken spirit. Who can bear, the Bible says, and it leads to such horrors in life as everything negative is expected, everything negative begins to be experienced, and often all you can see to get out of this is to take your own life, which is not the answer. But look at Proverbs 17, 22. A happy heart is like good medicine. It says here in the expanded Bible, it brings healing. But a broken spirit drains your strength. It dries up the bone. Joy is the foundation. Happiness, when you've got a foundation of joy, this confidence, this strength, it is so easy for happiness now to flow in so many areas of your life. Here's a really interesting thing when you, if you want to talk about God. In Psalms chapter 100, it says here, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Everybody, all lands. Doesn't say, hey, when you feel like shouting, shout. When you don't, it's cool. Be real, be transparent. I understand what many people mean by being real, not being fake, not being phony, but that's not what this is saying. It is teaching us how to reach down deep and begin to sense and know this strength that rises up in you, this joy. It says, just make a joyful noise. I remember years ago, I was a part of a pilot program um, for we didn't have any paramedics in the province. And so we just started one in the hospital I was working at and began to work at that and train with the doctors. And um, as we were there, um, I had to learn as a paramedic that joy was a way that I kept my mind together. Because if I didn't, it was amazing how deep you could get into despair and to discouragement. And many of my friends lost their marriages and, and became addicted to something. Um, many of them did. And, and you know, I don't blame them. I don't think without Christ, I don't think I would have been able to either because I'm no stronger than them. But there was something about coming home to Sally and my girls. And I just learned Learned that I don't feel anything right now, make a joyful noise. Now, I'm being a little bit personal here, but there are times with the things that have pushed at me and the things that are going on where I found a quiet time and I begin to shout to the Lord, just saying, you're awesome. I put my faith in you or I'll get up and sing with my kids as they're dancing around the room and just shout and laugh and just break through that thing. Just make a joyful noise or make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. We didn't make ourselves. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Now he says, verse four, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts 
with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let me give you some truths buried in this brilliant teaching of the Bible. It says that we need to be thankful. When there's nothing to be thankful for presently, thank him for what he's done. Thank him for the blessings you've had. Thank him for the things that are in your life. Go back and thank him for things. Make lists with a pen. Sit down. Force yourself to say, I'm thankful for. List the people. List the things. Because we, if you want to experience the presence of God, and by the way, the presence of God is righteousness, to feel good about yourself because of Jesus. The presence of God is a peace that passes understanding. The presence of God is a joy, unspeakable and full of glory. This is the strength of a leader. This is the strength of a person walking through the storm. You know the sayings. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep going. I love this portion of scripture because it's so amazing that we enter his gates with thanksgiving, get into his courts with praise and be thankful. Those three words are a tremendous way for you and I to know this strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength.